in all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. Look at your neighbor real quick and just say to him, he's about to preach <laughs> on how to handle what's trying to handle you. you somebody else who don't really believe you and say, you know what? This man is about to preach on how to handle what's trying to handle you. It has been said, it has been said, it has been said that Job lost everything during his time of affliction. It's true, y'all, he lost his family, his finances, his fitness, and his friends. Yet, through it all, he never lost his faith or his relationship with the Lord. When the bottom fell out of Job's life, he still maintained his confidence in the Lord. In doing so, he demonstrates to us how we can learn how to handle what's trying to handle us. I need to find the five folk in here this evening that there's something in your life right now that's trying to handle you. That there, there's something going on in your own personal situation that's trying to drag you down and trying to make you lose your faith in God. When I stop by here this afternoon on my way to heaven, really, y'all, just to tell you how was trying to handle handle you. Watch this. Everyone in this room has gone through or is going through difficult times. Ain't no need for you to front to nobody. In fact, there's never been a human life in existence that was free from burden and care. This should surprise us because the Bible tells us that these things are going to happen to us over and over and over again. Augustine put it this way, God only had one son on this earth without sin, but none without suffering. I just need you in here because I think, y'all, we have been brought up in this modern day to believe that as believers we are not supposed to suffer. But I need to find me somebody in here who has been through something and discovered that when you came out, you were stronger than when you went in. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you just, you, just ought to, you just ought to start rejoicing about what you're going through because you know when it's over, God about to do something great in your life. Watch this, watch this, watch this. When these things come into our lives, y'all, we can react in one of two ways. We can either move toward God or we can move away from Him. See, I've seen trials produce both reactions in people to whom I have ministered to over the years. There was a man by the name of Joseph Lincoln. He caught this attitude. He says trouble afflicts folks differently. Trouble is like hot weather. It sours milk, but it ripens out. Can we talk for a minute? Huh? Watch this. It is my conviction that trials come to help us grow in the Lord. If this is the case, then it stands the reason that we are expected to carry out certain duties while we are in our trials. Or oh, if I had y'all in here. What I mean is that there are times, y'all, when our valleys are, 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 are there just to make us stronger. That's the time you ought to be proactive. God has certain expectation when it comes to our attitudes and behaviors while we are in the situations that are trying to handle us. For this message this evening, I, I want to draw our attention to the faith of Job. I want to show us, y'all, that Job performed certain things even while in the midst of the most devastating situation any human being has ever faced. But see, some of us have lost some of this, but none of us have lost all of it at one time. You got to read your Bible. You got to understand. Now watch what happens, y'all, because this text is so powerful, it will mess you up. The Bible says that, that, that watch this, that, that, that the sons of God come to visit their father. 
They show up in heaven one day to hang out with their daddy and to share with them what's going on on their journey. And guess who else shows up? Satan shows up with the sons of God. And I just need to pause to help somebody in here because just because you're holy, just because you're sanctified, just because you're filled with the Holy Spirit does not mean that Satan will not try to show up in your life. I wish I had some honest folk in here who can say tonight, there have been times, Pastor Washington, when I was doing everything that I knew to do for the Lord, and all of a sudden, Watch this, watch this, watch this, y'all. Watch this. The text says they showed up. It's right there. It's right there. And guess what, y'all? That Satan, Satan, God says to his sons, he says to him, where you come from? Yeah. Watch this. Satan says to God, I, I've been roaming around, walking back and forth, going through the earth. Watch this. In other words, Satan is making an indictment against the people of God because what he has seen has not been demonstrative of the God that they serve. Or if I talk to you in here, watch this. I wonder, I wonder today, because God has blessed some of us, and I'm tired of folks who the Lord has blessed acting like they have not been blessed. As a matter of fact, you're making the folk who are going through think that you can't get through. But I need somebody who the Lord brought you through and blessed you after he got you through just to shout hallelujah right now to help somebody be. He says, I've been going to and fro. I've been watching your deacons, and I've been watching your deaconess. I've been watching your preachers, and I've been watching your ushers. I, I've been watching those folks who claim that they love you and worship you in spirit and in truth. And guess what? There ain't none of them worth nothing. That's literally, that's literally the translation of this text. Satan goes to heaven and tells God that God's people ain't worth nothing. You know, Reverend, because look at the next verse. God says that you considered my servant Job. God literally says everybody else might not measure up, but I got somebody. And I need you to know that God's going to always have somebody who's going to be a witness for him. If I got a witness in here this evening, watch this. Job says, Job says, Job says, he says, and you considered my servant Job. Now watch what God says. God says there's none like him. It might not be in your Bible that way, but it's in my Bible that way. God said, there is none like him. I, I, I wish, I wish, I wish God could brag on me like that. <laughs> I, I, I wish when, when, when Satan would show up in heaven to God to say to him, have you considered my servant, Carl Washington? There is none like him in all the earth. It, it, it's right there, y'all. There, there's none. That, there's like him. He's a blameless and upright man. One who fears God and shuns evil. Watch this. But you think that scared Satan? Wait a minute. God says there's none like him. But Satan says, well, the only reason that he is still acting like he's acting, the only reason that he is doing what he is doing, God, is because you've been good to him. Oh. No, I, I'm going to pause to really help somebody here because I need somebody who knows that the Lord has been real good to you. I mean, he's been real good to you. Watch this. When you understand that, you will understand sometimes why trials come into your life because see, Satan is telling God the only reason you serve him, the only reason you worship him, the only reason you lift up his name, the only reason you call on him is because God has been good to you. Talk, talk to it's right here in the text, y'all. You better understand. He said, he says, he says, he says, he says that, that that's the only reason. He, he, he says you 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 put a hedge around him. You put a hedge around his household. Huh? You put a hedge around all that he has on every side. Nobody can touch him. And isn't that great to know this evening that we got a God who will hedge us? He'll put a hedge around us and nobody can touch us. Nobody can do anything to us unless they get permission from him. And God only gives permission when he knows he can trust you. Preaching in this evening, man. Watch this. He only gives permission. He doesn't give permission for some of y'all because he knows he can't trust some of y'all. He knows that if something happens to you, you're going to do what Job's wife asked Job to do. You're going to curse God and die. But God says there's some folk I have that, that I put a hedge around. But guess what? I can remove the hedge and they 
will still praise me. I need to find somebody who the head has been removed right now who can give God some glory in this place. And I got a witness here. Watch what the text says. Watch what the text says. It says, you blessed him. You blessed him. You not only blessed him, but you blessed his possessions. Watch this. You blessed the increase of his land. God, you've been good to him. And what Satan wants most of us to believe is that the only time we ought to give God glory is when he's being good to us. Can I talk to you in here? But I need somebody in here who can give him some glory and you ain't got nothing. You ain't got no reason to give him glory. You don't have a reason for folk to see that you ought to praise his name. But you can praise him Look at the text, y'all. Look at the text. Look at the text. Watch this, y'all, because it becomes, it becomes great here. God trusts him so much. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? He says to Satan, stretch forth your hand. Yes, Touch. Touch. Yes, sir. All he has. Uh -huh. Huh? Satan says, I I I if I do that, if you allow me, he'll curse you. Yeah. And, and, and Satan says, God says to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Yeah. Only don't lay a hand on him. Okay, Baby, all, all that he has yeah. is in your power. Yes, sir. Just don't lay a hand. Yes, sir. Don't lay a hand on him. Yes, sir. No, no. All yeah. that he has is in your power. Just don't lay a hand on him. Don't you know my brothers and sisters that Satan is limited in what he can do to you? Because God says limits on him on what can happen in your life. And I can talk to y'all in here. Now watch this y'all because the Bible says Satan left the presence of God. He went out from God and watch this. Tyler Joe's children was having a party. They were having a party, y'all. The Bible says they were eating and drinking in the oldest brother's house. And watch this, y'all. While they were having a party, Satan starts his plan. And I tell you here, watch how Satan progresses in the life of Job, and you will see how he progresses in your own personal life. Watch this. He didn't go after Satan's stuff first. He went after Satan. He went after Job's children. Wait, wait, rewind, rather. He didn't go after Job's stuff first. He went after Job's children. No, I'm going to find you in here. He, he did not go after Job's stuff first. He went after Job's children. And see, whenever you're serving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, he going to go after your children first. I wish I had somebody in here. There are folk in here who know that your children don't serve God right now because of what they've seen happen in a church building. By folks who's afraid to know God in the pardoning of their sin. You know right now that your children are looking at other religions because the God that you serve, when they watch the people who claim to know him, y'all, they didn't see the God that you claim to know. He went after his, his children. He killed his children. There is nothing closer to a father's heart than his, than his children. Can I talk? Mothers, you know, you know the prayers and the tears you shed over your And if you haven't shed none, just keep on living. You just keep on walking. Maybe yours are too young for you to understand what I'm trying to say to you. But Job's children were grown. And the Bible says Job made sacrifice for his own children. He went before the Lord on a daily basis to make sacrifice for his own children. I wonder this evening how many parents we have in here that talk to the Lord about your children every day. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He took his children, he took his children, he took his children. Watch this, y'all. Then, then the messenger came, told Job what was going along. He says, I need to bring this news to you because I alone have escaped. Huh? Watch this. They took his donkeys, they took, they took his sheep, they took 
everything that he had and they kept running with message after message after message after message and watch this y'all Job, Job says the Bible says Job broke ah. see 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 how you handle what's trying to handle you is when stuff shows up in your life you need to stop quitting You need to stop giving in. Right. You need to stop trying to act like God can't do what God says he would do. I need one witness in this house who knows that God can do everything that he says he can do. I wish I had y'all here because you can shout glory even right now. See, there must be a devotion to God. If you're going to learn how to handle what's trying to handle you. Uh, Grandma knew would say it this way. They say, I will trust in the Lord. I don't care if you don't have enough food in the house. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I don't care if you don't have enough money to pay our bills. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I don't care if all my children are sick and I don't have any medical insurance. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I need somebody who remembers when you didn't go to the doctor. But Grandma and them used to fix up some stuff. And I don't know where they got it from. I don't know how it worked. But they would fix up some stuff. And, and, and they would get on their knees. And they would put it on you. And they would pray on you. I need a witness in this house. And stuff that you had. You discovered that God was a God who was a healer. Watch the text, y'all. Watch the text. It says he rose. He rose. He rose, y'all. He rose, y'all. You got, you got to have a devotion to God. See, I don't care what goes on in my life. I know that God won't let anything come into my life that's going to destroy me. What he does is he uses the things that comes into my life to deepen me. Or if I had y'all here, see, see, you got, you got to stop whining about what's going on. Everybody's done had rough times. I remember times, y'all, when I didn't have enough to pay my mortgage. But guess what? Let me tell you what God did for me. Because I'm going to help y'all in here today. I, I, there was a time in my life, y'all, where I was about to lose my house. I didn't have money for my mortgage. And the girl that babysat my little children, her father was rich, y'all. He had a whole bunch of money. And she came home one day and said, you know what? Reverend Washington ain't got but one car. He only got one car and he needs two cars. I'm about to lose my house, y'all, so I ain't thinking about no car. But, but the man went out and bought me a car, y'all. He brought me a brand new Chrysler New Yorker fully loaded. I went to the National Baptist Convention in 1993. I need y'all to hear me in here. I went to the convention in 1993. He had put the car at my house. I had never drove it. About to lose my house. House, went to the convention with tears in my eyes because my wife sacrificed because she wanted me to go. Can I preach in here and help somebody? You better understand. Watch this, y'all. I got back home. I started the car up. I was going to take the kids to school. And Cara stands at the front door and she says, Daddy, you know that new car of yours? It's on fire. Wait a minute. Lord, you let a man give me a new car. I ain't drove it, y'all. Ain't no miles on it. I started it up over some dry leaves and the car caught on fire. And before the fire department could get to my house, the car was totally destroyed. Can I tell you how God will provide for you? Well, when I called the insurance company to tell them that I lost the car, the insurance company came out to the house, assessed the damage, totaled the car, and cut me a check. When I looked at the check, I didn't know what a price of New Yorker cost till I got the check. But when I looked at the check, there was enough in the check for me to save my house. Can I talk to y'all in here? Not only, not only did I save my house, but I went down to the car dealership and bought me a smaller car. Can I preach up in here? You gotta understand, this God that we serve. What's trying to handle you? You gotta have devotion to God. Oh my God, wait a minute, Reverend, but you need to tell us something else. He rose. 
But then you got to have a dependence on God. See, too many of us depend on ourselves. And let me tell you, there is no situation that God puts you in that you can get yourself out of. You're going to need God to get you out of it. If you're in it because God puts you in it, it means that God is trying to teach you something because he put you in it. Look at somebody and tell him he put you in it. So why do you keep going to other folks trying to get you out of it? Why don't you go to the one who put you in it? Why don't you get down on your knees and tell, talk to the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, you put me in this. I need you to tell me how you going to get me out of this. You don't understand God's ways are not our way. And you don't need to try to figure him out. God, God's working on you right now. He's trying to get you to understand what we're going through. Think about what's going on in our nation and in this world right now. And somebody's going to try to tell me that God's not talking to his church. No, my brothers and my sisters, God's talking to us because we've got a comfortable anxiety. we got an ease in the house of the Lord. And God says, I'm going to shake y'all up. I'm gonna, I, yes, he is. You need to look at somebody and say, he's shaking right now. He's going to shake up. He's going to shake up America. He's going to shake up New York. He's going to shake up talk. He's going to shake up your house. Uh, because why? Because his word. My dependence, I depend on. I depend on God. Uh, see, I'll tell you, see, see, I'm one who knows the prayer word. Why watch this, y'all? Because see, see, y'all might always had it easy, but I ain't always had it easy. And a lot of stuff that happened in my life, I brought on myself. That's how I know prayer works. Because every time, girl, I brought something on myself, I, the Lord allowed me to get on my knees and start talking to him. And the Lord said, that you brought on yourself. He said, but what? Guess what? I'm going to be merciful to you. You gotta have devotion to God. You gotta have dependence on God. But look what the Bible says. The Bible says he rose. Ah, tore his robe. Ah, you need to ask yourself, what do I need to tear off of me? What, 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 what do I need to have stripped from me? The text says he, 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 he tore. His robe. Now, now in those times, that was a, a sign and a symbol, y'all, of grief. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, 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 what it was was what, what was Job grieving over? He had lost everything. God had bragged on him. Why would he stand up to tear off? In the grieving process, uh, Jews would not stand up to grieve. Wow. They would not stand up to do what Job did. So I had to ask God the question, why did he stand up? Huh? See, every trial in your life, no matter how bad it is, is a good thing for you. Yeah. Oh, oh, you, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it, it was good for me that I was broke. It was good for me that I lost that job. Well, oh, I need somebody in here who lost the job and thought you were going down and God gave you a better job. <laughs> see, see, if God had not let you lose the one job, you would have never looked for, can I talk? It was good for me. See, in the blackest night, God is working out a plan for your life. Huh? When it's dark enough, they can see the stars. And it, 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 if you go walking through through a deep, dark valley, watch this, you'll grow in the Lord. Have I got a witness in here? Watch what the text says. He ripped off his robe. Watch this. And the text says, and he shaved his head. Yeah. Grieving. Yeah. Yeah. Great grieving. Yeah. No, grieving, y'all. All this news in one day, and 
The Bible says he rose. He got up. Took off his robe. Shaved his head. But here it goes, y'all. The text says he fell down. And worship. Oh, I had y'all in here. Wait a minute. How, how do you handle what's trying to handle you? You got to have a devotion to God. You got to have a dependence on God. But there must be a diligence before God. You see, I got to learn how to worship. Yeah. No matter what's happening in my life. Yes. Now, I'm not talking about praise right now. Because the church got plenty of that. But what we need is some folk who can worship God. And that worship comes because you don't worry about what God's doing for you. You worship God because he's just God. See, I, I don't need God to do anything for me to worship him. I worship him because he's God. But watch this. He, he didn't have to do anything, anything. All he had to do was be for me to worship him. Can I talk to you in here? Because you worship him because you love him. No, 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 no. I need somebody here who knows that somebody you love really don't have to do nothing for you. If you really cannot talk up in here, they ain't got to do nothing for you if you love. See, so it makes me wonder, Pastor Washington, about whether or not folk love Jesus. Because all you ever hear folk talk about is what they need Jesus to do for them. Can I preach it here? <laughs> Watch this, y'all. Jesus has already done enough. That he only ever have to do nothing else for you or for me. When he died on Calvary for your sins and my sins, that was enough. <laughs> when he took those nails in his hands and that crown of thorns in his head, that was enough. When he took that spear in his side and was with all night long for your sins and mine, that was enough. And I will have enough sense to worship him in spirit and in truth. I need to give God some praise right now because everything he's already done was he. Watch the text, watch the text. Watch the text, y'all. See, 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 Joe, Joe, Joe says, Joe says, he worshiped him. But why, watch how he worships him. Because how he worships him will help you handle what's trying to handle you. Joe says, naked came I from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. See, we always preach this at funerals, but this ain't no funeral text. This is a text for the believers to live every day by. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. What are you saying, Reverend? With everything I got, the Lord gave it. I didn't get it on my own. Because can I really help you? If you got a good brain and you earned a PhD, you didn't get it on your own. The Lord gave because the brain you got, the Lord gave. If the Lord blessed you with a good job, don't walk around patting your own self on the back. What you need to say is, the Lord gave. If the Lord gave you good health and he gave you some strength, then you need to tell somebody, the Lord gave. If the Lord gave you good eyes to see and ears to hear, don't take it for granted, but tell somebody, the Lord gave. See, everything that you have, the Lord gave. If the Lord gave you healthy children, you ought to give God glory. But if the Lord gave you sick children, you ought to still give God glory. If the Lord gave you brilliant children, you ought to give God glory. But if your children are ADHD, you ought to still give God glory. Why, y'all? Because the Lord gave. No, I need you in here. The Lord, the Lord gave. Everything that I have, when you walk out that door this evening and get in your car to drive home, before you get in it, you ought to shout. Put your hand on it and say, the Lord gave. Because I can tell you, just like the 
the Lord gave, the Lord can take away. I need somebody in here who knows he can take away. You need to shout glory right now because you need to understand if the Lord gave it, the Lord can take it away. But my response when I'm trying to handle what's trying to handle me is blessed be the name of the Lord. See, I gotta let folk know that no matter what I have, the Lord is still worthy of all honor. He's still worthy of all praise. He's still worthy of all glory. And I had 20 people in here who came to give God some glory this evening. You can shout right now because you know you don't deserve everything that the Lord has given you. You know you don't deserve how God has opened doors for you and how God has made ways for you. You know you don't deserve the help that you got at this moment. I look at my whole life. I, I'm obese. I'm overweight. Can I help y'all in here? I'm fat. I'm overweight. I ought to be on medication. I, I'm 59 years old. I ought to be taking some kind of pills. But let me tell you how good God is to me. I don't have no high blood pressure. I don't have no sugar diabetes. I'm fat, y'all. I'm overweight. But God has kept me. God has preserved me. God has opened doors for me. Can I talk to y'all in here? See, the Lord gives. Can I talk? The Lord takes away. And somebody ought to shout, Bless it! Bless it!
in all things. Job said not, nor did he charge anything. Anything. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. In all this, in all. In all this, how to handle what's trying to handle you. Get up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop wallowing in your own self pit. Understand, it just may be that the devil been back to heaven. It just may be that the devil has told God that the only reason you praise him is because he's blessing you. It just may be that the devil told God take the hands off of him. It just may be See, I discovered a long time ago that Satan wanted to take me out. See, see, if you ain't on this hit list, you part of his family. See, every child of God is on his hit list. So if you ain't on his hit list, that means you're part of his family. That's why things keep happening to you. That's the word there. Because you're part of his family. 